I believe there's magic here tonight. Holy crap, man, what a day. I'd been spending the week busy as crap, moving and cleaning houses left and right, and right when I'm reaching my limit, Type Moon drops the sun bombshell that in spite of Samurai Remnants collab in January, we are still getting the annual Golden Week collab event, and lo and behold, it's a collaboration with Witch on the Holy Night. Oh my god, it's about damn time. And on that, like I said, I am in the middle of moving as we speak, which is why this video didn't go up literally immediately right after the announcement. Also, my current setup is incredibly messy, so I apologize in advance if the audio isn't up to snuff, but I really wanted to discuss everything that's been going on for Mahoyo in regards to both new and old fans alike. So, there are many, many reasons why this specific event is kind of a huge deal, and I want to discuss every inch of it in detail. There's a lot to go through, so bear with me. First off, there are probably a couple of people here who don't even know what Witch on the Holy Knight is. So, let me give you the quick rundown. Witch on the Holy Knight, also known as Mahotsukai no Yoru or Mahoyo, is the very first Type Moon work ever completed, period. This is a story about Meigai living in modern society and it is the very work that spawned Type Moon's universe as a whole. If you would like to learn more about Mahoyo and its importance in Type Moon history, I've already made a whole video on that for you to check out. This video was made in regards to the, at the time, brand new anime adaptation announcement and thus discusses it from an anime format. However, everything I said inside that also applies to the visual novel as well, so you can totally use this video to help you learn about the visual novel itself or introduce Mahoyo to other people who are interested in the visual novel as well. At this point, Mahoyo is probably the easiest Type Moon story to consume at all. As the visual novel is both on Steam and console in multiple languages, English included, so if you have any interest in checking out the first Time Moon entry before the collab drops, absolutely buy it officially and just enjoy the read. Trust me, you won't regret it. Hopefully with what I've said though, I've established that Mahoyo is a pretty big deal. This is literally work number one. And honestly, it still leaves me in awe because while we have been waiting for this collab for a very, very long time, why is all of this relevant? Well, if you've been playing Fake Ground Order for the past few years, you might remember that some of the collabs recently were, um... They weren't collabs. If we look past the recent Samurai Remnant event, all three Golden Week collaboration events we've had were collabs with Fake Ground Order spin-offs. So essentially, Fake Ground Order was collaborating with Fake Ground Order. Now, I'm not here to diss any of those who enjoyed those events, or heck, even the events in general. I think the arcade event was one of the best events that Fate Grand Order ever had. But, at least to me, I feel like the point of a collab and what makes these events special is the collaboration aspect. Getting references to other established stories and getting to re-familiarize yourself with characters while also introducing those stories and characters to brand new fans who might not have ever seen them before. When Fate Grand Order collaborates with itself, all of that is gone. While Arcade did build a decent plot of its own, Learning with Manga was a gag series with basically no plot, and Walt just didn't bother. If you put the event stories and characters on paper, there is nothing about these that stands out as a collaboration. Especially with Waltz, instead of getting a familiar character you might know from another story, we just got a brand new original character introduced for this event specifically. Which is the same thing we get in every single other Fate Grand Order event ever made. No shade on Miss Crane, but this is not a collaboration character. It's another Grand Order original. What's the difference with this and Benny Enma? You know me, I love Type Moon as a whole, and that includes every part of it, no matter how flawed. I like seeing the universe brought forward and collaboration events were one of the few remaining examples of this. There was a reason I went 8 mode every single year as part of my experience with this game. 
So as someone who had always looked forward to them, I don't exaggerate when I say the self-collaboration trend genuinely detracted from my experience with Fake Grand Order. As a result, it really makes me happy to say that Type Moon has been taking steps to fix those mistakes of the past. With Arcade being built up enough to stand on its own merit and Samurai Remnant, while being a recent release, is still a very valid collaboration with pre-established characters joining the roster of Fake Grand Order in a familiar way that brings both of these stories together. And on that, after Samurai Remnant's event, I honestly thought we wouldn't be getting a Golden Week collab this year because, well, we'd only gotten one per year as of late, and with the March info stream not mentioning the Golden Week collab at all, I thought, fair enough, Samurai Remnant was the collab. But, as we all know now, Type Moon was just holding out on us, as per usual. During a re-airing of Fate Zero, Type Moon confirmed that some Fate Grand Order news would be announced, and some people on the JP side drew parallels to how in 2016, the Rakyo collaboration was revealed through very, very similar means. Lo and behold, these suspicions would all prove to be correct, and we got the Mahoyo announcement right during that very airing, meaning we've officially received two collaborations in the span of one year for the first time since launch. That's huge. And more importantly, this makes Mahoyo the third collaboration that isn't a Fate series collaboration. The ones before being Rakyo and Case Files. And honestly, I have been waiting for a Mahoyo collab ever since Rakyo because its existence it proved that Type Moon was willing to collaborate with the whole Nasuverse, not just Fate. With Mahoyo being brought over, this once again raises the possibility for other non-Fate Type Moon works such as Notes and Maho Hako to get collaborations with the game as well. Especially since both of these works have been referenced in Grand Order as of late. Nasu has stated a Tsukihime collaboration is likely only going to happen once Red Garden is done, so Tsukihime fans may have to wait a bit longer. Even then, with Arkway getting early access to Grand Order as an anniversary servant, this means we are finally going to get the four great Type Moon heroines in this game, making this their first meeting since the beginning of Chibichiki. Now, that's a sight for sore eyes. I've seen a few people concerned about the fact that Type Moon prioritized a gacha collab over making the promised sequels, but I think that there's more to this than just wanting to get money or being lazy. Now first off, let's go back a few years, cause we need to remember that the whole COVID situation happened. While it may be over now, Planning for stories like Fake Grand Order, Mahoyo, and running a whole story-based company like Type Moon usually means content takes about a year or two for things to actually come into practice. COVID definitely affected Type Moon back in the day. You have to remember, Type Moon only consists of like, what, 20 people? This is not a big company. And you need to remember that limitations back in the day were going to have effects that lingered for a very, very long time which I theorize is one of the causes why Type Moon had greatly slowed down on content outside of Samurai Remnant recently. This would include lack of progress on written works such as Fate Requiem, the visual novel sequels, Tsukihime, and when it comes to Fate Grand Order, this would also explain the lack of quality of life updates, animation updates, and just general content. Now, I'm not saying that this is the definitive answer or that it forgives all of this lack of content. I'm just here to provide a bit more context and broaden your perspective a bit. On that matter, some people ask, why is Nasu focusing so much on Fake Grand Order instead of finishing the new works that he's promised? While Tsukihime Remake was, indeed, some new Type Moon content, the Mahoyo console release was an unchanged script and was mainly just a reprint of the game with voice acting and a translation. And instead of ending Cosmos in the Lost Belt, we've instead started another mini arc called Ordeal Call. I can't say anything for sure, but the thing is, while COVID did affect the company, it seemed a lot of people forgot a much more pressing issue is that 
Nasu was kind of hospitalized during this whole time frame as well. He himself had stated on his Bamboo Broom vlog that as Tight Moon was finishing up the Lost Belt 7 script, Nasu had begun experiencing some major breathing problems, to the point where he, and I quote, started having convulsions all over his body. So yeah, in case you forgot, right after Lost Belt 7 script was done, Nasu was pretty much hospitalized and recovering from his severe overwork. I theorized the reason we got a gap in content was because of this very hospitalization. As we need to remember, Nasu is not just a main writer. He is a supervisor for all of Tight Moon and the brains of this entire company. When Nasu is gone, Tight Moon is gone. Or at least, it doesn't function nearly as efficiently. Like, I was there disappointed with everyone else about the lack of quality of life updates or lack of updates in recent works. The 2023 end of year Fate Grand Order stream was one of the most disappointing things Tymoon had ever put out in my opinion. And I don't blame anyone for thinking that there was a lack of content because there really was. But there's a reason for that. Whilst we'd all like to imagine that Nasu is immortal, he is reaching his 50s and he needs to take care of his aging body. With the unfortunate passing of recent famous authors, you'd think that we would be more empathetic to writers looking out for themselves, but apparently not. Writing amazing stories like Tsukihime or Mahoyo takes a lot of effort, and while Nasu is capable of it, we need to remember that he is a human, not a robot or a machine. Being in the right mind for making a masterpiece is important, and when you're recovering from severe health issues, I think it's okay to take it easy. I want Nasu to be writing for as long as he can, so if he needs to take a break from the heavy stuff and make some easygoing casual fake run order content, I can accept that. Now Meteor on the other hand, I don't know what he's doing. Give me an update, man. I'm still waiting for Requiem Volume 3 and Girls Work. Thankfully, Nasu has stated that at this point, he's made a full recovery from the ordeal. And recently, we've also gotten quality of life updates and animation updates back into Fake Grand Order, so who can say what's next? Maybe plan Expand the Nasuverse is back in action. Who knows? We got Hibiki and Shigagi references in Fake Grand Order material, so Maho Hako revival soon? I can't say, but I hope! Now, there are some who think that the collaboration is a sign that we're relapsing to having everything be fate-focused again, but I don't agree on this. If that was truly the case, this collab would not have happened at all. Again, the Fate Grand Order collaboration with Fate Grand Order Ouroboros was the true hell as far as I'm concerned. Nasu hasn't written any Mahoyo since 2012, so maybe a low stakes Grand Order event is exactly the kind of recalibration he needs to refamiliarize with Mahoyo's writing for the sequels that we all crave. And heck, a collaboration is the best way to advertise another IP to new fans and drive up hype. Between this, the visual novel reprint, and the upcoming anime adaptation, I would actually say Mahoyo is getting more focus than most Type Moon properties have had in ages, even more than Tsukihime. So if this train keeps going, those sequels have an infinitely higher chance of coming out compared to how bad it got in the late 2010s. Am I optimistic? Maybe. I don't actually blame anyone for being that pessimistic about the whole thing considering how badly Type Moon milked fate since 2016. But I see the Mahoyo focus as hope, because this is the exact sign that shows me Type Moon still remembers people care about this story. Rather than dooming this whole situation, I'm more happy that Mahoyo is getting new content rather than becoming the next girl's work or Maho Hako, where they've been completely forgotten by both fans and creators alike. Where the hell is Hibiki Hibino? Put her in Grand Order, I don't care. If Aoko can make it, Hibiki can too. Seriously, to all the people who have been continuing to doom about the Mahoyo sequels for a decade, at least y'all have a chance now. I still legitimately do not know if I will ever see an ending to Maho Hako or a start to girls work. So chin up a bit. You're far from being at the lowest point anymore. 
Regardless of what happens, I am personally over the moon over this collab. It's interesting, because while Mahoyo feels like it's new, with the re-release of the visual novel and anime adaptation, this is actually the first new story we've had with Aoko and the gang since Chibichuki. And if you want my personal predictions on what this collab servants are going to be, I've actually already covered this very topic on my collaboration predictions video, and my opinions haven't really changed at all. So give that a watch if that's what you're interested in seeing. Either way, I am personally really looking forward to this event, and even more so, the potential collaborations we may see in the future. I'm probably expecting we'll see something like Fate Strange Fake or Fate Lost Einar Jar next year, but please, give me Prototype, give me Maho Hako, give me Hibiki Hibino. The latter really needs some focus, okay? But either way, I'm happy, and that's all for me for now. Until then, all we can do is wait, so for now, I'll be looking forward to the event news in a few weeks, and hopefully, I'll see all of you somewhere else on the internet. Until then, have a great day. It's been a good one.